Hello and welcome. You're with us here on Business Today. I'm Abha Bakaya. Here are the day's top stories. Sensex falls 400 points. Nifty ends below 17,900. IT, metals, real estate, some of the top losers today. The rupee weakens significantly against a raging dollar on aggressive Fed rate hike prospect. Bank of America survey shows investors fleeing equities en masse on fear of recession, allocations to stocks at record lows and cash exposure at all-time high. Tata step up their efforts to reinvigorate Air India, unveil transformation plan targeting 30% market share in next five years, will focus on network and fleet, customer experience, reliability among other issues. Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari says petrol and diesel vehicles must be discouraged to curb pollution and the fuel import bill pushes LNG and hydrogen as the fuel of the future at the Siam Annual Convention. Detroit Auto Show returns with a bang after two years. President Biden rides an electric car and promises $900 million for charging infra. But petrol-powered cars clearly still rule the market. Investors were in for a rough ride yet again. After a volatile day of trade, markets ended in the red for a second day. Sensex gyrated within a more than 800-point range during the session, slipping below the 60,000 mark. In a seesaw session, Nifty 2 failed to hold on to 18,000 levels. Markets were weighed down by metals and IT stocks. The Nifty Bank, which had touched a lifetime high intraday, also slipped over 600 points. Hindalco, Infosys, Sipla, Tech Mahindra and Apollo Hospitals were the top blue-chip laggards. On the upside, auto stocks zoomed with Maruti Suzuki, Aisha Motors, some of them being the top Nifty gainers. Others included Adani Ports, NTPC and PowerGrid. In a volatile market, it's the bank stocks which have been gaining traction. The stocks are back in vogue with SBI and ICICI Bank powering the Nifty Bank Index. The banking space is riding on the back of healthy loan growth and endorsements by brokerages. But will the momentum sustain? My colleague Sakshi Batra spoke to Chandan Taparia from Moti Dal Oswal. Listen in. Uh, I want your uh, thoughts on the Nifty Bank, uh, you know, coming to record levels of 41,840 intraday today. Um, you know, what led to this rally? Why are investors really chasing the banking stocks? They have performed remarkably, remarkably well over the last two or three months as well. So uh, help me understand, do you believe have things structurally changed for the banking space? Yeah, uh, thanks, Saksi. Uh, we have seen good outperformance in the Bank Nifty and Today, it uh, made the new lifetime high of 41,840. Earlier, lifetime high was 41,826 marks. And the good part is we have seen good run-up. Uh, if I look at YQD basis, your banking index is up by around 16%. If I look at the month-on-month -month basis, we have seen run-up from all the way to 32,300 to 41,840 kind of level. So good run-up of more than uh, 10,000 points as seen in the Bank Nifty index and uh, the good part is that it has rallied by around 16% on YTD basis. So positive setup is clearly visible. And in this entire moment, we have seen participation mainly from ICC Bank, SBI, support based buying was seen in Axis Bank, even the counter like Indusin Bank has also seen the good run up. So we believe this outperformance could continue in the banking index. However, in Nifty, we are still 700 points lower than its lifetime high, but yeah. Bank has made it. So we believe this outperformance continue. On immediate basis, we have supported 40,250 and with the support of 40,250, slow and steady bank nifty is all set to head to us, 43,000 to 43,500 uh, zone. Okay, so slowly and gradually to 43,500 zones. But in case I have to ask you till Diwali, since that's the next landmark that the markets are eyeing and the investors are watching out for, you said the Nifty Bank you expect to continue to outperform. So on technical charts by Diwali, what kind of levels do you really expect? Yeah, so when you talk about uh, on Diwali basis, we are looking uh, near to 40 to 500, uh, further 1500 plus points really from the current level. And mm -hmm. if you look at the support that will be near to uh, around uh, 40,000 mark. So 40,000 to 43,500 or uh, 42,500 could be the major level we are looking for in uh, 
big nifty index okay but do you also expect nifty bank to outperform even the nifty uh, in the run up to diwali and should that the index be on uh, you know traders radar should that be the preferred index exactly we are expecting this outperformance uh, is likely to continue uh, because what we have noticed in this market selective it counters are laggards which is not allowing your nifty yeah. to perform well in line to the broader market so that is the reason and again we believe that momentum could continue in counter like sbi icic bank axis bank industrial bank and all mm. these bank counter could lead from the front so that's why okay. we believe that bank nifty will outperform the broader market going forward as well well since the start of the year markets across the globe have been in volatile territory according to a bank of america survey investors are fleeing equities on mass amid the specter of a recession as per the survey allocations to stocks are at record lows and cash exposure at all time highs 52% of respondents of the survey are underweight on equities while 62% are overweight on cash the number of investors expecting a recession has reached the highest since may 2020 moreover the energy crisis is weighing heavily on risk appetite with investors turning super bearish about 42% of global investors are underweight on european equities While Indian markets have outperformed its peers, will Indian investors also soon follow suit? That's the big question. IT services firm Tata Consultancy Services has emerged as the country's most valuable brand as it more than doubled its brand value to 45.5 billion dollars. According to Kantar Brands in India, TCS beat HDFC Bank and Infosys to claim the top spot on the country's most valuable companies list. The brand value of TCS zoomed a whopping 212%, while HDFC Bank, which had the pole position for the past 6 years, rose 62% to $32.7 billion. Third on the list was another IT company, Infosys. It was followed by telecom major Airtel and Asian Pins. Tata Group owned Air India on Thursday announced its increase in uh, domestic market share by over 30% in the next 5 years that's the projection the airline plans improvement in areas of customer service technology product reliability and hospitality through its 5 year mission called vihan.ai my colleague karishma joining us with all those details uh, karishma currently of course uh, air india holds a domestic market share of 8% is 30% in 5 years achievable Well, uh, it's a five-year mega plan by Tata's Air India through its uh, Vihan Point AI mission, and like you said, Abha, uh, it's going to be quite a journey from eight percent to thirty percent market share, domestic market share that uh, Tata's are talking about uh, for its uh, uh, Vihan Point AI mission for uh, its, uh, uh, of course, special Maharaja. But uh, I think it's a good strategy to go ahead with because uh, Air India and its recent announcement has also quite. focused on expanding its domestic and international market recently they also announced uh, their uh, addition of new fleet by leasing out 30 new aircrafts so with a combination of boeing and uh, uh, airbus so going forward it looks like uh, vihan point ai could turn out a game changer uh, because the essence of air india and the emotional value that air india carries uh, uh, with its indian consumers uh, could now uh, further be upgraded and outshine Uh, with its special service uh, uh, after of course vihan point ai uh, helps in supporting that but what is also being guaranteed is uh, good uh, customer service timeliness uh, and most uh, important they are mentioning is some kind of innovation in terms of technology that consumers can expect uh, 90 years Uh, uh, it's been 90 years that the first Air India aircraft, of course, was taken uh, off and introduced by JRD Tata to now, where uh, Tatas have got it back and now are looking uh, to refurbish it uh, and uh, bring the best version of Air India to its consumers. Thanks for that, Karishma. Global rating agency Fitch has joined others in lowering India's GDP forecast uh, for the current fiscal. The agency said it expects India's growth to slow down and that it has cut the GDP growth forecast for 22-23.
to 7% from 7.8%. The reasons Fitch gave for this downgrade include the global slowdown, elevated inflation and a tighter monetary policy. Fitch follows other global agencies in lowering their India growth estimates as well. While Goldman Sachs has lowered its estimate to 7%, Morgan Stanley has set 7.2% as the GDP growth target. Citibank is predicting a 6.7% growth, while Namura has the lowest figure of all at just 4.7%. Even multilateral agencies like the IMF and Asian Development Bank have lowered their India GDP growth estimates. The Reserve Bank of India, meanwhile, expects the Indian economy to grow by 7.2% this year. Here's what else is making news in the corporate world. Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank hit the bourses today. It was a muted listing. Shares listed at a discount of 3% against the issue price of 510 rupees. Market veteran Shankar Sharma backed Annapurna Swadesh's IPO has opened for subscription today. The price band of the share sale has been fixed in the range of 68 to 70 rupees. The net proceeds from the issue will be utilized towards setting up additional units in West Bengal and expanding the product range to eastern and northeastern states. The country's largest lender, State Bank of India, has raised the benchmark prime lending rate by 70 basis points to 13.45%. This would lead to EMIs going up for the borrowers who have taken loans at the base rate. BPCL slipped in trade today after Oil and Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri said that plans to disinvest the company had been put on hold. The union minister did not give any timeline for when it may be considered. The centre had earlier called off the ongoing process of strategic disinvestment. Let's take a very quick break. Back with more on the other side. with facts. She takes the news by its horns. You think the future of these students are not hampered? Fierce, bold and direct. Setting the tone for the bigger stories. From every corner and every angle. Expect nothing but the unfiltered truth. News first, niceties later. Watch me Nabila Jamal on India Today. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Welcome back. Luxury car maker BMW India is witnessing a solid recovery in the market. The company in the first eight months has clocked over 51% growth in four-wheeler and 45% growth in two-wheelers. Business Today TV's Chetan Bhutani caught up with Bikram Power, President and CEO at BMW India, on the festive season and growth plans going forward. Tell us about how the year is going so far. Festive season is coming up. Uh, we have not held a record number of sales with good launches for electric vehicles also. Uh, how has this year been now? So I think Chetan, what we have seen since uh, the pandemic kind of settled down. Uh, there's a slow and very uh, solid recovery in the market and especially for us we are seeing a uh, rapid comeback of uh, customers into the dealerships inquiring about products and i think excited about especially with the new launches to you know uh, try out the new products and buy them so 
Um, just to give you some figures, in the first uh, seven months of the year, uh, we have actually, oh, sorry, eight months now, August is also finished. The first eight months of the year, we actually clocked 51% uh, growth in our four-wheeler segment and 45% uh, growth in our two-wheeler segment. So really solid growth, record numbers in both these segments uh, for the year. Uh, it is also our 15th year of operation, so feels good that we are able to deliver, you know, record uh, number of uh, customer deliveries in a year, which is a 15th year of celebration. So uh, I think I think this will continue, this will continue. Recently, uh, uh, you were, there were problems regarding uh, manufacturing facilities, various rumors were going. Could you just tell us if there are any plans for additional uh, manufacturing by BMW? Uh, would you just like to clear that? So BMW is committed to India and we have, I think, invested in India over the last 15 years. So we have our facilities in Chennai, which is our manufacturing plant. We have our offices in Gurgaon and training center in Gurgaon. And also we've got some purchasing office in Bangalore. And we are committed to that. Uh, there is no plan to invest further in any facility. Right, so then why did that faux pas happen then? I think you asking the wrong person. It's considered to be one of the biggest Motown shows in the world and after being in the slow lane for two years, the Detroit Auto Show is back. As expected, EVs are the big stars with President Joe Biden even driving one on the black carpet. But don't rule out the traditional uh, combustion engines just as yet. President Joe Biden taking a victory lap in a Cadillac EV at the Detroit Auto Show. Come on, jump in and give you a ride to Washington. Come on, we're ready. Is that my Uber? Uber ride? That's an Uber. But then he was back in a V8, petrol powered Corvette. I'll tell you what. Let him drive it off. Watch out. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, my head of my Secret Service detail, yeah. I'm driving Uber. Accompanied by top transport department officials, the U.S. President announced a $900 million grant to set up 500,000 charging stations for electric cars in 35 U.S. states. <music> Meanwhile, Detroit's automakers say they are ready to go all electric, showing off a number of new EVs. Chevrolet took the wraps off two new electric models, the Chevy Blazer SUV and the Equinox Compact SUV. On the other side of the show floor, Dodge has its Daytona SRT concept, billed as the first electric muscle car. Ford is showing off the electric lightning variant of its immensely popular F-150 truck. Also in attendance are manufacturers showing off their electric car chargers and other EV infrastructure wares. With the US government spending heavily on conversion to EV, the sector turned highly profitable. However, despite the prominent showing of EVs, Detroit Motor Show is still predominantly about cars running on petrol engines. Let's look at the evolution of the automobile and the ICE when it first came out you know, where it was and where it is now, there's development time that takes. It's not, we're such a society that's instant, you know, go through the drive through and get everything instantly. I think, you know, it's just gonna take some time to get there. Among the big launches in Detroit, the all new seventh generation of the Ford Mustang, Chevrolet also took the wraps off its 433 horsepower, 6.2 liter, V8 Tahoe SUV with a top speed of 200 km per hour. And these are the displays which still attract the most crowds. Bureau Report, Business Today TV. He is the top economic advisor to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, heading the powerful Prime Minister Economic Advisory Council. But even this exalted status could not save Vivek Debroy from being scammed by an online retailer. The 67-year-old economist tweeted this morning that he had ordered a Philips iron through Amazon, but the box he received instead had some kind of a brush and an unidentified object resembling the top of a conch shell. The top-level economist won over the social media by following up his tweet with two limericks. The first went, we ordered an iron in a box as delivered something to Fox. Between Philips and Amazon, the responsibility will drag on. But customer service needs to detox. This was followed by another one. Will customer response be faster or a complete disaster? Without a start, there is no finish. But reputation does diminish, with service yet to master.
The new iPhone lineup was launched last week at a grand event in Cupertino. But the iPhones will only reach early bird customers later this week. At Business Today, we are asking the million dollar question. Should you shell out the big bucks on the iPhone 14 lineup? Our tech editor, Ayush Alawadi, brings you all the answers in this exclusive review. Well, it's iPhone season and you know what that means on Tech Today. We have the iPhone 14 lineup exclusively for you. A first look and a hands-on on the show, the iPhone 14, because this is the youngest sibling now, since there's no iPhone 13 mini or an iPhone 14 mini, they've discontinued the mini line. And then the biggest sibling, the eldest sibling, the iPhone 14 Pro Max in all its splendor in this deep purple. I'll get to the color in a bit because at every different angle when the light hits this phone, it looks different. It grows on you, the color looks fantastic. The iPhone 14 comes in a different sort of a blue. The minute you hold this, this feels quite light. This, of course, is much heavier. Remember, we were chasing the 12 Pro Max in 2020 and all throughout 2021. Now in 2022, Apple has outdone themselves. Bigger sensors obviously mean more light can enter. And that also means better low light photography. So better night photography as well. But there's a catch. All these years, we've seen three 12 megapixel sensors on the iPhone. They've been optimized. They give you great camera output. But this is the first time that it looks like iPhones and Apple are trying to compete with the Samsung Galaxies of the world and the other Android manufacturers because they've given you a primary sensor on the Pro series and the Pro Max, which is a 48 megapixel. Let's also get to the iPhone 14. Great device, given that this is the base model and it comes with all the features that Apple has announced like crash detection, SOS via satellite will be rolled out very soon. And this year is not like last year. Apple has given you the A16, which is the new Bionic chipset on the Pro line. On the standard 14 line, it's given you last year's A15. Look, manufacturers all over the world have been trying to innovate, but Apple knows how to market their products really well. A small feature, if you just turn on some music on this phone and you swipe up, you see the notch, it automatically becomes bigger and wider. This is a beautiful software implementation in terms of what Apple has done with the new Pro line and of course with iOS 16. So the notch has become more of a pill shaped sort of cutout, which has so much more functionality. I can't believe how other manufacturers haven't considered this in the past. But this is how the notch or pill cutout looks, how small it looks now on the iPhone a lot of other manufacturers have done away with it completely, but there's a lot of use cases there. And then this is how the notch looks on the iPhone 14, very standard in terms of how we've seen it over the years. Now, in terms of what the camera can do, of course, now cinematic mode can go up to 4K 30, which you couldn't do earlier. So that's a big upgrade when you're talking about cinematic mode. You also get action mode on the camera, which Apple says means you don't need a gimbal anymore. I'm not sure about that. What we will do is we will test it with a GoPro. We will test it with a gimbal and tell you how the stabilization is. In terms of the Pro Max, look, every year, there's a whole bunch of enthusiasts who want to invest in the top of the line iPhones. From the 12 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max, maybe that wasn't the ideal upgrade. But for the first time, I can safely say a lot has changed under the hood and a lot has changed on the outside as well. Features like Dynamic Island, always on display, what they've done with the cameras and this deep purple color make this perhaps a contender to be the best iPhone yet and maybe the best premium smartphone of 2022. We will test that claim on Tech Today. So stay tuned to Business Today TV for more. And that's all we have time for on the show tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices.
Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at arjtag.com. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now. I don't read the news. I read between the lines to tell you the true version of events. The true story of our times. To document grief, the toughest assignment for any journalist to be. From those who matter. Women politicians going to stick up for each other. Of those who should matter. I document the truth. I don't distort the truth. I don't glamorize the truth. I don't gloss over the truth. The ghosts of India's contentious medieval history have come knocking again. I hustle for the truth. On the ground, in the newsroom, in the I studio. I don't try to grab eyeballs. I inform you to make you see the point. To the point with Preeti Chaudhary. At these times, only on India Today. Co-powered by RK Marble. Khoopsurat Imandari. In association with Geomart, Har Ghar Ka Mart.